everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. If you are new here, my name is Moran. Here I share my crochet object knitting journey mostly, sometimes mixed with some life stuff, my deep love for homemaking, sourdough, my clean eating journey, what I read, and in general everything that brings me joy. You can find me on Instagram and Facebook and on Etsy as Crochet Objet and on Ravelry as Crochet Objet Knitting. Today is Thursday, July 13, and we are having a pretty heavy heat wave here in Israel. Uh, so I'm very grateful to be sitting here in my cool and air conditioned studio. Um, and chat and record this video for you. Today I'm here to reveal a new crochet bag pattern I just released this morning. Uh, if you follow me on Instagram and on Facebook, you already probably know that I'm talking about the mini bag. So this is my new crochet pattern, the mini bag pattern. It's a new raffia crochet pattern. Um, yeah, and I just released it this morning and it is now available for 20% on both my Etsy and Ravelry stores. Um, yeah, to celebrate the new release, I updated 20% off on both my stores no code needed um, and yeah this special price will be available from today until monday midnight jerusalem time so just make sure to check out your time zone if you don't want to miss this special price and if you want to add this pattern to your library uh, using the special uh, price so this is the mini bag pattern and today I wanted to share everything about it with you. Um, yeah, first I just want you to know that this pattern comes with five video tutorials that I uploaded um, here to my YouTube channel. I uploaded five different video tutorials and they are included in the PDF file. Uh, in the digital file that you will download to your computer. Um, yeah, five different video tutorials to help you along with the making. Um, I made this bag using the same raffia I used for my Como bag that I released on July um, last year. So it's the same raffia that I was gifted by one of the loveliest uh, knitters on the Mondays Club. And this is the Adria Phil Raffia. And I used the natural color. So I think it's an Italian Raffia, 100% cellulose vegi vegetal wood pulp the boy, the boys. Um, and it's 25 grams per uh, this cane. So I used five balls for my mealy bag pattern, for my mealy bag, and uh, it's more or less 350 uh, meters. Uh, so you will need 350 meters of uh, raffia yarn uh, to make the bag. And I also used um, for the flowers in the squares I used um, a wool from the Tibetan cloud wool from Mayak fibers I used the wild daisy um, color and for this pattern, I used about 80 meters of this yarn, and in one skein you have 100 grams and 300 meters, 328 yards. I used more or less 80 meters, 
and I had some um, leftovers that my uh, fibers kindly sent to me when I developed the chamomile and sage pattern with them. So I had, I work with two balls and I hold uh, two strands together for the flowers. I hold two strands together to get this chunky, uh, puffy popcorn flower inside the square. I held the yarn double, so I prepared two small balls of the Tibetan cloud that I can hold together and crochet uh, the flowers in the squares. Yeah, today I made myself um, notes just to make sure I cover everything that I want to say. Uh, but if you have any question and if I missed anything, please feel free to leave a comment down below and ask whatever you want to know or whatever I missed and I will do my best to answer you as soon as possible. Yeah, I uh, used a four millimeter crochet hook for the entire bag from start to finish. I used a four millimeter crochet hook and the gauge is 16 stitches per four inch, so 10 centimeters measured on the single crochet uh, section. So with this gauge, you can try your tension and make sure um, what is the best hook size uh, that you have to use, what is the best for your hands and for your tension. I use the four millimeter and I have 16 uh, stitches per four inch. Yeah, I think it was back in Granny Square Day on 2022, on August 15, which is the Granny Square Day, that I published um, this square. When I, this was when I first published this square. And this square is a mixture of raffia and wool. Again, the same raffia as in the bag and uh, can you see, yeah. And the same uh, Tibetan wool that I used in the bag. And I really liked it. I made it just, I think, not long before this granny square day. Um, I was playing with the raffia and with the wool and I made it and I immediately fell in love with this uh, raffia and wool kind of granny square and I posted it on the granny square day on the social on my social media and uh, I got a lot of positive reactions and uh, yeah and the girls here on my weekly clubs um, also really really loved it and I knew I would like to somewhere in the future to make something out of it and also you were so kindly asked uh, when will I have the pattern for this square and when will I make a pattern out of this square so I think from the first I had a big idea uh, in my head uh, starting to grow uh, I, I knew I wanted to make a bag out of this square, co cooperating this square in a, a bag pattern. But ever since I made it, it was placed here on this cabinet under the big window here in my studio. And it was sitting here in a nice composition with other squares and swatches that I knit and crochet and it became part of the styling of the studio but every time I passed and I saw it I was inspired to start and develop a new pattern with it um, but I think it was uh, only at the end of May when one of the Mondays uh, lady ladies, the Mondays Club ladies, uh, came to the meeting with a beautiful small 
crochet raffia kind of tote hanged on her uh, shoulder and she bought it in Paris and she came with it to show me the, this pretty bag and I was totally inspired by this bag, by this chicy bag. Uh, I will try to find a picture uh, of this bag and I will insert it here. I think I shared it on one of the reels that I sometimes make after the, after the weekly uh, Mondays club. So she came with this bag and I was totally inspired and this was the moment when I felt my hands start to be itchy and I already know this feeling uh, as a designer. I know when it comes and I knew that this is the time to start up with my bag, raffia bag idea and I started to crochet with the raffia I had in my studio and I had this Adria fill. I had five balls left from uh, the natural color. So I knew I will make a bag pretty much in the same size of uh, the Como bag because also in the Como bag I used five balls of the same raffia. So I knew it will be um, made pretty much it will come up pretty much the same size or more or less uh, and I started to crochet uh, these squares can you see can you see it maybe if I touch the screen anyway I crocheted these raffia and wool mixture uh, granny squares um, I made I think six of them and uh, I made a stripe, I joined them to a stripe of granny squares and then I closed the stripe to create a tube and I think from the moment it became, uh, it came out uh, as a tube, from the moment uh, I had the tube shape I could clearly see uh, in my mind, I could clearly see the bag it is going to become. I think it, I could clearly envision the shape of the bag, the size and the silhouette of, of the bag that I'm making and designing. Um, I, I just couldn't see the handles yet. But I was thinking, okay, this is the nature of a designing process and a designer is a, a problem solving or I don't know how to say it right in English, but I will come up with a solution for the handles. I trust myself, I trust the process. I will just make what I can see in my mind and then when I come to the handles, I will handle it. <laughs> so. Uh, yeah, so I just started crocheting and making the bag. I had my uh, pattern writing software opened on my computer and everything that I made, I immediately wrote down. And it was really uh, a good idea because uh, it, was, it made my life easier while writing the pattern because I have from my pattern writing experience, I know that it is the best way to, mostly when you want to explain how to make simple things. Simple things are the hardest to uh, explain in a written pattern. But I already knew that I will, um, that I will include uh, video tutorials within the pattern. So I also had my, um, video recording area next to me. I wrote the pattern and then I recorded a video of everything that I wanted to explain through video as well. So you, in some of the sections you have written instructions and video tutorial included. So yeah, uh, let me explain how the pattern works. So you will start by making the squares as I just explained now. 
you will work this pattern just exactly as I uh, crocheted it, exactly the same way, and it works in sections. In the first section, you will make six uh, squares, six granny squares, uh, wool and raffia squares using these popcorn stitches. And then after you have uh, six squares, you will be you will join them using the front slip stitch method and I have a video tutorial for this included as well. When you have a uh, six squares stripe of six squares, you will close it to shape a tube and when you have the tube of squares ready, you will put it aside and then you will move on to the next section and on the next section you will work a foundation chain and you will crochet an oval shape around the foundation chain uh, you know with all the increases in the corners and then after a few rounds of working around the foundation chain and creating this oval shape you will just make your way up to crochet the lower section of the bag and this is all made out of single crochet stitches. In the squares you will uh, use a double crochet stitch and a popcorn stitch. And I write my pattern using the US term, US crochet term. So a double, a single crochet is like a double crochet in the English terms. So all the lower part of the bag, all the second section is made out of single crochet. And then when you have the lower part of the bag ready, you will uh, join it with a tube of squares. And again, you will use the slip stitch, front slip stitch method. And for this section, for joining both parts, one to the other, I also uh, created a video tutorial. And I think I forgot to mention, but after you finish uh, crocheting the squares, you will end up the square making with making a round of uh, front post single crochet, uh, front post slip stitch, sorry, around the first round of the square. So this will be the last round that you will be making on the squares. And I also included a video tutorial of how I make it. In this video tutorial, you will see um, the, the front post slip stitch uh, was made using this wool, which is a sandness, sandness garn cos. Uh, because when I first made it, I thought I would like to add a color. So I used this uh, yarn. And the color is, I'm not sure what color is it, 9512 maybe. But this was uh, the first version that I made using, that I made the front post uh, round. So in the video tutorial, you will see, uh, I think in the joining of the tube of squares, you will see this wool uh, used uh, for this round, but eventually I decided to keep it simple and I made the front post with using the raffia. So the video where I show how to crochet the front post, I use the raffia yarn so you can see exactly how I do it. So when you have the base, the oval base of the bag and the tube of squares ready, you will be joining them again using the front slip stitch method and there is a separate video that I show how to do it and how to close it because on the last stitch you, it's a little bit tiny little detail and I included a very closed up video. Uh, I filmed my, and making it very very close so it's clear I hope it will be clear I hope it will be helpful uh, I would like to know if 
what do you think and, and yeah and after, and then you will actually get pretty much most of the bag will be done and then on the third section you will be making the upper part of the bag so you will be attaching a new yarn and work a few rounds of single crochet around the other side of the tube of squares up to the edges of the bag so in this section you will be making a few rounds of single crochet and on the last round of single crochet you will create spaces in each side chain spaces in each side of the bag uh, that you will need to uh, you will come back to it when you want to attach the handle on the last round you will be <clears throat> making a slip stitch to the back loop only uh, to get this tiny little detail at the edge of the bag which I really really like and on the last section you will make the handle and yeah when I came to the handle designing um, it was it was quite a journey I tried a few handles designing designs a few handles options I at first I had two handles in my mind um, hanged out from the inside of the of the bag and I tried and I made a few versions um, a few options and it was quite a journey I wasn't happy uh, with it I wasn't happy with what I have what I had and I thought okay I'll give it a day or two I'll sleep over it maybe it will uh, it will I will come up with the with the idea um, Yeah, and I made a few options, and but I had a, a general idea uh, in my mind. I wanted my, the handle, no matter if it would be one or two, I wanted it to be made out of a braid of you um, using the raffia yarn, using like uh, um, a bundle of uh, like thirty strands of raffia yarn. So I made a hand the handle and uh, I started with a knot made a braid out using 30 strands of raffia and then I ended up ended it with another knot made out of the raffia and then I wasn't sure how how I want to to attach it and how will it be and I left it aside um, in the space where I film, I record my uh, video tutorials, I put it aside, I just laid it there without attaching it, and I put it there, I think it was a, a Sunday, and then I said, okay, on Monday I have the Monday club, I want to get prepared, um, so I didn't have the time to continue working on it, so I left it aside, I put the handle, just put it on top of the bag, and left it there, and when I came the next morning I I was I, I really loved it I loved the single handle hanged from one side to the other side of the bag uh, so no two handles and I thought wow this is it I have it this is the handle that I want to have for this bag I really really like the shape and the silhouette it makes and I just like everything about it so I had I had a very happy moment I said okay I have it here is the solution I have the handle design uh, made so yeah the day after I was sitting and writing and making the handle and finding the solution of how to attach it and yeah, when you come to the last part of the bag making and you want to attach the handle, you will be using the space, chain space that you prepared uh, on the last single crochet round here. And then you will uh, take this bundle of 30 raffia strands back to 
the inner side of the bag and then you will be uh, attaching it here using um, using I think it calls the wrap wrap knot and I also included it in the um, attaching the handle video tutorial that I made and then you will be using the same rough yarn that you used for this wrap knot, wrapping knot and you will be attaching the handle to the inner side of the bag to both sides and you will be uh, attaching it so you your stitches are not showing on the front side so this is how it looks I hope you can see clearly and this is how it looks from the right side from the wrong side and yeah this is it you will be attaching the handles you also have a video tutorial that I show how exactly how I do it so you have it as a written instruction within the pattern but you also have it as a video tutorial uh, and yeah I think uh, this is it this is how you will make the mini bag pattern and when you are done, if you like, this is just an, an optional part, but you can block your mealy bag. And I also included in the pattern exactly all the details how I block my raffia bag. Yeah, I also included a picture shows how I do it. Uh, basically, I just fill it up with paper, with scrumped paper, and I spray hot steam around it to shape it and to stiffen the edges a little bit. I shape it very, you know, like I like to go with the steam around it and go on top of every detail. And you can also do the same when you have the stripe of the six squares, you can steam it and block it before you join it. But I think it, um, gives it you know gives it the final uh, shape and um i don't know but blocking is i think for me it's, it makes the difference but anyway you don't have to block your rough your bag you can immediately use it and uh, it will block itself while using it so yeah, last weekend, Eyal, my husband, we celebrated his birthday and we had some plans for just me and him on Friday and uh, we went out and for dinner and then we went uh, nearby the beach to have a nice walk and then we had tickets to a stand-up comedy so I took my mealy bag, it was blocked and it was ready to use and I took it out and about with me and I was so happy to have it and um, I like the way uh, it looks yeah and what I did I just placed this cotton fabric bag that I received uh, as you can see it's a mango bag that I received with a purchase I made I guess or maybe my daughter uh, and maybe the shirt or whatever we bought was inside. So I have this mango fabric bag in which I put my uh, wallet and my glasses, uh, sunglasses, and I had my um, Sophie shower with me the other day because it's uh, summer here in Israel, pretty hot summer, but uh, Everybody is turning the air condition. Sometimes, you know, they take it in, into a very cold um, degrees. So I always leave the house with a, with a shawl or with a scarf. So if I feel too cold in the restaurant or in the stand-up uh, hall, uh, I can just put the scarf on me. So. Uh, and yeah, when we went to the to dinner, we had an early dinner, and we had a sunset walk by the nearby the beach. Uh, I also took some knitting with me, coziest memory blanket. So 
I guess you could see I shared pictures on Instagram uh, of me sitting and knitting in the car on our way there. Uh, so yeah, my mealy bag is already in a massive use here. Uh, and yeah, it is now available. The pattern is now available in both in my Etsy and Ravelry stores. And I think it was on the last, on my last blog post that I shared um, another version of my mini bag pattern made. And I just talk too much and I have to drink too keep my voice <laughs> in a normal state. Yes, yeah, so one of the ladies in the Friday club, she really loves to crochet bags. She really, she has a lot of crochet bags that she uh, made. And, uh, not always following patterns, but in most cases I was involved in how will she make it in terms of construction and she I think I shared it on my last blog post she made a version of the milli bag pattern use my granny kit cotton hell double and as you know my granny kit cotton is a sport weight uh, four ply yarn so if you want to try and you don't have to have my granny kit cotton you can use um, any yarn and in general I think you can get creative and if you don't have a raffia yarn or if you don't find a raffia yarn I think you can easily uh, get creative and use whatever you have in stash and make your own version of mealy bag. Uh, I can't wait to see the versions of the mealy bags that you will be making in the future. Anyway, the Millie Bag pattern is now available in Etsy and on Ravelry and you can now have it with a 20% off to celebrate the new release from today until Monday midnight Jerusalem time. No code needed, I just updated both stores with a special price and it will be available till Monday midnight. I think this is it. I think this is everything I wanted to share about the Millie Bag pattern. It's quite a quick project. It's not a long process making this uh, bag. You can see it's, the size is not too big. Uh, yeah, can you see? The size is not too big. It's nice shoulder hang. Um, bag and I think it's a nice and you know pretty quick project so if you want to give someone or I think uh, it's a nice project to give someone or gift yourself this is everything I wanted to share about this bag Um, and yeah, this is it for today, I think. Um, yeah, uh, we are about to start our weekend. I hope I will also um, manage to send a blog post regarding my mealy bag. So you will have all the details here on my YouTube channel and also on the blog. So if you like to get my blog into your inbox you can go there and get subscribed or just visit the blog whenever you feel like for a nice read uh, so yeah I hope I will manage to put together a short blog post and to release it into your mailboxes um, tomorrow this is it for today thank you so much for joining me here and yet Welcome to all my new subscribers and thank you if you are a returning viewer. Um, I really appreciate you come and visit me here. I really like and enjoy sharing my crochet object knitting 
journey with you. So yeah, I wish you all a very good weekend. Enjoy your time and thank you so much for watching and I will see you on the next time.